gives him a, a kind of crutch to lean on, man. to get through adversity. So I would attribute this to a deep felt psychological expression of a hunger, a desire, a need. That, but that doesn't make it so. Is there a running joke about some type of mooning thing? Sure is. Okay. <laughs> I totally believe that after-death communications are part of our everyday life, whether it's avoiding a simple car accident, and people say, oh my God, I saw my father's face and I avoided the accident, or a simple message of love coming through in a visit, which is a dream, or the actual reading where the, the major validations come through to provide us with the evidence of, this is real. I think that the abiding myth that we will live on is the cradle of virtually all mythology. It's a universal in human experience. I think the notion that immortality is a, a con game the human mind is playing on itself is, is absolute nonsense. I think we have intimations of immortality, as Wordsworth put it, because we are immortal. American culture is so what I call spiritual dumb on the notion of death. Uh, and other cultures are so much more what I call spiritually intelligent. The fact that we make such an issue over the, is there scientific proof for some kind of survival of death in many ways is specific to modern Western culture. A lot of traditional, indigenous, simpler sorts of cultures where religion sort of permeated the fabric of everyday life wouldn't see this as an issue. Not only were people taught to believe that in their religious upbringing, but a lot of apparent psychic phenomena happened that seemed to prove it. People would dream of the dead, and obviously they'd received a communication from a loved one, you know. And the emphasis was on what did the communication tell you, not on is it possible for people to communicate. My grandmother passed on, and I feel her, and I see her, and I know she'll be with me for, for a long time. Unlike Western belief, I, I don't need proof that there is an afterlife. I, I live it, and I've lived it all my life, and I, I know that there is a connection. I was raised in, in Santeria and the Afro-Cuban um, heritage. My Afro-Cuban heritage has helped me um, understand that um, communication with um, the afterlife is a, is a natural is a natural occurrence, and it's something that just happens naturally. It's like taking a walk, actually. When the the topic of survival of consciousness comes to mind, there's immediately a paradox also comes to mind. From the general population point of view, everyone is interested, vitally interested in this question. And so you would think there would be a lot known about this, not only from, from an experiential point of view, because there are a lot of stories, but from a scientific point of view, because science is very good at studying difficult problems. But the fact is that there isn't very much that's known scientifically. I think the big reason that most scientists don't even know you could investigate survival of consciousness, much less actually look at it. They're psychologically very ambivalent or afraid about opening up that box of what's the meaning of my life. Suppose they didn't find any. So it's better to push the whole thing aside, say there's nothing to find. We know quite well how to study these things. Uh, it's just going to take a long time because we have, a, we have kind of a problem here. We're studying, does consciousness survive? Okay, that's a good question. Well, let's begin by saying, what is consciousness? We don't know. So maybe someday when we figure out what consciousness is, we'll be able to study whether it survives. But until then, it's going to be a giant guessing game. We should have hundreds or thousands of scientists with the most, with the greatest psychological sophistication studying hundreds of mediums to really get at this. But now the real question I would ask is, do we leap in and do we allow an act of faith to say this is true when it is not sufficiently or objectively supported? And the skeptic would say, no, don't deceive yourself. What we're about to do tomorrow 
is uh, never been brought been done in the history of science. And it has never been the case before that a group of pioneering mediums are teaming together with a group of scientists in a university that really believes in the idea that any important question that is meaningful for people should be asked in an open fashion. Tomorrow we are going to have a marathon. In the morning, we are going to do the naturalistic experiment. It is a mediumship demonstration experiment. Demonstration means we are not addressing the how it works. We are addressing to what extent does it, quote, work. Okay, this is what we're going to do first. We're going to put a cap on you that has 19 electrodes. During the experiment, we will be recording your electrocardiogram, your heart waves, and your electroencephalogram, or your brain waves. What is that? It increases the conductivity. These data might tell us something about how a medium's heart and brain are connecting with the sitters during a reading. I'm going to insert with a blunt needle some gel through. My name is Patricia Price. I'm from uh, approximately 30 miles west of Phoenix. It's a small community, mostly cotton farmers. Are you ready? Okay. No, I don't feel like a guinea pig, not at all. I don't. Uh, like I said, I'm very excited. This is an opportunity. This is the very first time, yes. And I'm very, actually, I'm quite proud to be part of this research, so. For some time between 10 and 15 minutes, you and this person will sit together, and you will do whatever you do in your own way. Don't start doing anything yet, because we have to... We've get added the these controls to the experiment. We've ensured that you and the subject have never met. There will be no eye contact, so a screen will separate you. The sitter will give you only yes or no answers. You will share no information with the other mediums. Don't share a word of anything Never. until the entire thing is over. Don't have to worry. Now, during the reading, the sitter will make subjective judgments rating the extent to which they personally feel that you are making a recognizable contact with a specific deceased loved one. Before we start, I want you to understand real clearly how I work, okay? Okay. Uh, you've never done this before? No. Okay, then we're fine. Um, okay, two things. I have to tell you just very, 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 very fast here. Uh, I'm getting a couple people around you very, very strong. Your papa's gone, please. Your papa? Yes. Your father, papa's father. Father's been gone some time, they tell me, um, Patricia. And I don't know why, but your father gave you your name because he says, I gave her my name. I gave her my name. Okay, what's going to happen is there will be a series of impressions, pictures, and words, and things that make no sense to me come through in my mind. I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing, hearing, and feeling, and basically ask you to confirm and verify it simply by yeses or noes. Okay. Okay, um, the first thing that's coming through is to tell me to talk about a male figure to your side. A male figure to your side would be a husband or a brother who has crossed over. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay, actually, there's two, there's three. There's three. They're showing me one seems to be like a husband figure to you. Do you understand that? Whatever I say to you, just acknowledge with yes, no, or that you understand only. Also, who you least expect may show up along with who you hope will. Doesn't matter how close you were to them, how long ago they passed on, or whatever. Okay, well, first of all, a male presence around you. Uh, they talk about the younger male that passed. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, because whoever he is is claiming he was the first one in the room, so I guess he wants the credit of coming first. That's good. Uh, okay, uh, as I'm uh, tuning myself with you now and I'm beginning to feel the touch of spirit, I see a woman that uh, she's very close to you from the world of spirit and has been for many years. Uh, she has particularly pretty eyes, rather large, wide set eyes, highly arched brows. She doesn't say that way. <laughs> you recognize my name maybe someday, but not. How are you doing today? Doing terrific, thank you. I read by voice. So by hearing your, just your voice, not information, just your, your voice is, is enough. Um, do you have a grandfather in spirit? Yes. Okay, I will tell you that this person is a very, very strong man. He comes through with a lot of zest, a lot of energy. Very strong. Started we have had quite a day today. Just to review what happened. There were six people that were listed as possible visitors. Every one of them was observed at least once. In addition to these six